H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Participants, this is Priya here from H2K Infosys. And participants, this is the second session for our project-based classes that we are conducting. Um, one moment, there is a question here from Asma. Asma, the space in which you are typing the question currently, that itself is a chat box, so you can type your questions here. And Neelam, regarding the materials and recordings, please call up HBK Infosys. So participants, um, let me introduce myself once more. My name is Priya and I'm a senior automation tester with nine plus years of experience in this IT field. I started my career as a .NET developer and then I changed my career to QA after moving to US. So this is my introduction participants. And then a quick follow up on what we discussed in yesterday's class. So in yesterday's class participants, we have discussed some basics about the software testing concepts. So we also introduced you to the IT industry. First of all, what is software? What are the different applications? How the software is developed? How it is tested? And then we have discussed all the testing concepts in yesterday's class. So today is the second day participants wherein we'll be discussing the practical exercises using the tools. And in yesterday's class, we had also discussed two sample applications. One was the finance based and then another was the healthcare based project examples that we discussed. So in today's session, we will see participants what exactly these testing tools are and then how they could be used in the real time project. So participants. The IT is so advanced now, you perform any kind of activity here, you would require the different kind of tools in order to perform your activities. So first of all, let me take you to our syllabus wherein you will be able to find out various different kind of tools that have got included in the syllabus. Let me show you them. So participants here you see this is our QA course syllabus all right and here we not only discuss the basics of the software engineering concepts and then the manual testing but then there are different kinds of tools that we are going to discuss. So here we have the quality center participants which is a test management tool. So there is a tool which is called as a quality center, which is a test management tool. And then we have the SQL tool, which is used for the database management. And then the database testing, we have the Unix and Linux operating system. We also learn the automation testing here using HP QTP, the HP UFT, the latest version. And then we do the performance testing using the HP load runner. Web services testing will be done using the SOAP UI tool. ETL and data warehouse testing will be done using the Informatica tool. So these are the different kinds of tools that we are going to discuss in our QA course. I will show you a couple of them as an example, just little bit of introduction about each of these participants. And when you enroll in our QA course, you will be learning each of these tools in very much detail. And also these tools will be installed on your computer 
for your practice. Our technical support team will install these tools on your computer for your practice. So participants, we have the different category of the tools here, which will be used for the different purposes. So when we say that we have the testing tools, all the tools will not be used for the same purpose. All right. The different tools are used for the different purposes over here. Now, for example, participants. Testing can be done in two ways that we discussed yesterday. Either you can do testing manually with the human tester skills or you can do testing automatically using the software and we call this as a automation testing. So automation testing means participants when we are doing the test execution, when we perform the different steps and then check the data, we use the automation testing tools over here. So this is one category of tools. And under this automation testing tools category participants, we have the different examples. You can consider Selenium. It is an automation testing tool. HP QTP, the latest version is called as the UFT. So this is another tool participants which comes under the automation testing tools. And then the next category of tools we have, which are the test management tools. So in order to manage all your testing activities, we have the HP Quality Center. Again, the latest version of this one is called as a ALM. And then participants in order to test the performance of the software. We have the performance testing tool, which we call it as a HP load runner. In order to do the database testing. We need the database management system. The DBMS tool, wherein we are going to use a SQL language. And apart from this participants, as I mentioned here, so there are other tools also available. So as of now, I will be introducing you to these four tools. I'll just give a little bit of introduction how exactly the testing could be done. Okay. So participants, first of all, we'll consider the automation testing tools category. So here, as you know, in order to do the testing, I showed in yesterday's class, the testing concept, we took one real time example. So we enter the different steps. We enter the different combinations of the data and then we check whether the software is behaving as per the expectations. All right. Now, for example, let's say I want to test the login functionality. So first of all, I open the login page. And then I enter the valid username, valid password. And then I click on the sign in button. Correct. So these are the different steps participants that I have to perform. And then what could be the output? The output is basically the account opens with the inbox. So now participants, do you see these are called as steps? Now these steps can be performed manually by the human testers or it could be done automatically using the software here. All right. So these steps could be performed either by Selenium or the HP QTP or you can call it as a UFT tool. So I will show you participants how this QTP works. I will show you an example here how the QTP works. One moment. Uh, Motion, if you want the syllabus, it is already available on our H2K Infosys website. If you visit www.h2kinfosys.com, you can get the syllabus of our H2K Infosys courses. And Motion Selenium is not included here in our QA course. It is a separate course. If you want, you can add it into the package. And the smile Selenium and HP QTP, both of them are getting equally popular these days. 
and it all depends on the project. So I will show you the QTP tool here participants. The newer version is UFT. In our regular QA course, we will be discussing the UFT itself. The newer version will be discussed. But as of now, I will show you the older version of the UFT, which is called as a QTP. Just for your understanding. And even the new version also works in the similar manner. We follow the same steps. Everything will be same. The look and feel will be different and then the compatibility also will be different. Just for your understanding purposes participant, I am going to show you this QTP tool. So do you see? This is a quick test professional icon. When I double click on this, this kind of page opens. I click on the OK button. So here I click on the OK button to open the tool. So this is how participants the QTP tool looks like. So we have the different options here blank test start recording. So I will start with a blank test. And we can view the data table here. Then I can view the active screen. So do you see participants this is how the software looks like. And there is some sample application participants which comes along with this tool in order to learn this QTP which I am going to use it as of now. So first of all we have to open the application and for that we type here the command which says systemutil.run. So systemutil.run means we want to open the sample application here that is the flight application just for your learning purposes. So I go to the start and then flight right click properties and then I copy the complete URL here. And then we paste it here. So this is a complete URL. Alright. And then participants do you see we have the record run and stop button. So I click here on the record button. And then I can record the steps that we are going to perform. So whatever steps I am performing participants all the steps will get recorded here. Okay. All the steps are getting recorded here. So you see for example I have activated this login window so it has given the script over here automatically it has automatically generated the script the login activate. Then I enter the agent name here. For example I will enter it as Priya. Password is always going to be Mercury here. And then we click on the OK button. So do you see if I enter incorrect password it will give me the error message. So I enter the correct password and then click on the OK button. So do you see here participants whatever steps that I am performing automatically it is generating the script for us. So I will close this. And after the recording is done participants you can stop the recording here. And also if you want any kind of further enhancement for example I had entered the wrong password so if I want I can delete this one. So any kind of further modifications or the enhancements can be done here to the script. So these are the steps. Now when I click on the run button participants.
when I click on the run button so you can see here it will automatically perform all the steps and then it will give you the result it will perform the steps automatically and give you the result so do you see result is done it means that all the steps that I have performed it has passed so whatever steps it has executed it has listed over here and then you can see the step by step result so in case if there is any kind of error in any of the step over here it will automatically appear as an error which you can easily report it to the developer so this is an example of the automation testing tool that is HP QTP so now participants when exactly we can use this tool so there are different kind of scenarios participants wherein you could use this tool there are different scenarios over here So there are certain benefits participants of using this automation testing tool when compared to the manual testing. So the automation testing tools are much more faster, okay, much more faster obviously when compared to the manual tester. You could see right, I clicked on the run button and just in few seconds it showed me the result. But if you are doing the testing manually, you cannot do it so fast. And then the automation testing tools are more reliable. Reliable because participants as a human tester you might do some kind of errors But then if the testing tools are configured properly, then there will be no errors at all There are less chances of errors over here And that is why we say that the automation testing tools are much more reliable when compared to the manual testers It is repeatable now for example. I want to test the same login functionality with the different combinations of the user ID and password. First of all, I want to enter the valid user ID and password. I want to enter valid user ID, invalid password, invalid user ID and valid password, invalid user ID, invalid password, user ID blank, password valid. So do you see participants, the different combinations of the data can be tested over here. So every time you're repeating the same steps, you enter the user ID, you enter the password, you click on the sign in button. So the steps that you're performing are going to be the same, but then every time the data will be different. So here, do you see participants? We are trying to repeat the steps with the different combinations of the data. So when we want to do this kind of testing, whenever there are repeatable steps, instead of doing the manual testing, which is more time consuming for us, we can go for this automation testing tools. It is programmable. Now any kind of real applications which have the different behavior or a dynamic behavior during the execution, we can test it over here. And then it is comprehensive. You can do any kind of detailed testing over here in a short period. It is reusable. So there are different types of testing participants. There is a functional testing to be done. And then we have to do the retesting. Regression testing will be there. So the same functionality will be tested many times under the different types of functionalities over here. Under the, sorry, under the different types of testing over here. So each and every functionality has to be tested many times under the different types of testing. So here we are going to perform the same steps. So instead of participants doing the manual testing, the script or the program that I recorded, it is once that we do it and then you can run the same script as many number of times that you want all right you can run it many times so participants when we are doing the automation testing first time when we are recording the script yes it takes more time let's say it takes 20 minutes for us to record and then save the entire script with all the enhancement but every time we are going to run it it will take let's say some five seconds every time we run it for the different types of testing it just takes five seconds let's assume and for the manual testing participants, let's say that every time we do the testing, it will take 10 minutes. Since we are doing manually, 
every time we have to spend 10 minutes over here so do you see participants whenever we have the repeatable steps and then the same steps are to be tested again and again under the different types of testing automation testing is going to be more useful when compared to the manual testing all right automation testing is more useful over here but then participants on the other part so these were the benefits but again you have to consider other factors before you choose the automation testing for your project budget you have to consider you have to make sure that the testing tool that you are using it is within your budget you need to have the availability of the resources means the testers in your team should be skilled enough to use the testing tool that you are supposed to implement in the project and then the type of software so if the software itself is simpler if there are simple steps to be executed then there is no need of using the automation testing tool it could be done manually when there is less of testing to be done so basically participants you have to consider the project scenario you have to make a comparison which will be more useful whether the manual testing or automation testing and based on that you have to choose a tool and one more expense also gets involved here whenever we hire the manual testers obviously we pay less but if we are hiring the automation testers we need to pay more when compared to the manual tester so there are lot of factors participants that the test managers and test leads and also the project managers consider while they are choosing the tools for the testing purposes so this is about the automation testing tool that is qtp or the latest version you can call it as uft the more detailed type of testing the automation testing will be discussed in our regular qa course so now participants the next the next example is the test management tool that is quality center okay the next tool is the hp quality center or you can also call it as a alm so participants in yesterday's class when we were discussing the software testing concepts i have given you the different testing steps that are to be followed right so in order to do the testing we follow the different testing steps wherein we even create the test documents all right so now there are certain issues that are associated over here we need to manage all these testing activities for example how do you store the documents in the real time project where exactly you have to store and whenever you are creating the documents in the project you are supposed to share it with all the members in the team so how do you share the documents do you send an email to them as an attachment so how do you share the document you need to understand that how do you communicate within the testing team so for example you want to report a defect to the developer but how are you going to give a call write an email or meet the developer personally so how do you communicate regarding the defect or let's say you want to communicate with the other tester in the team so how do you communicate so this is another thing that you got to understand and then participants we need to maintain the security of the documents any document created in the project should not go to the outsider because it contains all the project related information and secondly even within the team one person should not be able to modify the document of the other person without any kind of authentication or the authorization so that is another issue that we need to take care and then participants the history of the documents since the client is changing the requirements very frequently we need to make many times the changes in the documents and we have to keep a track what date we made the change why we made the change what was the purpose of the change that we made in the document where we made the change everything should get recorded so we need to keep the track of changes that we make to the document and then we have the project managers and test leads in the team who would like to know what is the status of our testing process currently how many defects we identified how many of them have got fixed what is the current status they want to find out so practically it is not possible that they can come to each and every tester on the regular basis and then take the updates instead they could use this kind of test management tools in order to generate the reports and then find out what is the current status of the testing process and accordingly make the decision 
So participants, in order to manage all such activities, we have the test management tool like HP Quality Center. Other than this, participants, we have particularly the defect management tools like Bugzilla is there, and then we have the Jira tool. There could be any inbuilt tools, all right? Any kind of inbuilt tools in the project that can be used. Now you can see participants for each of the different purposes over here. There are so many different tools. So in the automation testing, there is Selenium, there is QTP. In the test management, there is HP Quality Center, Bugzilla, Jira, IBM Quality Manager. So many different tools are there. Even for the performance testing, there are different tools. Now the question is, which tool are you going to learn? How do you decide? Because as of now, you cannot predict, right? In the project, which tool will be used? You cannot predict as of now, correct? So how do you decide which one to learn? So one thing I want to mention participants, whether it is a software development or it is a software testing, we do it as per the standards. So any kind of IT projects or you go to any kind of IT company across the IT industry, we follow the same standards in order to develop the software and also test the software. So we follow the same steps that I gave you yesterday in order to do the testing. They don't change. Whether you use a QTP, Bugzilla, Jira, whatever kind of tool you use, the testing steps are not going to change. So when any company is coming up with a new tool, obviously they will have to follow the standards while developing this kind of tools. Now whether you use a quality center or Bugzilla, defect is always reported to the developer only. No change at all. All right. Only the look and feel will be different. They might have some enhanced features, but then the basic working of any software which you consider under a particular category will be same. It will not change. Whether you use a Selenium or QTP, I showed you the recording and run concept. You have to do the same thing even in the Selenium as well. Even in the Selenium, you record the steps and then you run it. You check for the results. Same technique has to be followed. Okay. But based on the technology of your project, based on the budget and all, based on the project scenario, you can choose the appropriate tool for your project. Anyways, it will be done by the test manager of your team. So this is the test management participants. I will show you the sample tool over here now, which is called as the quality center. So let me show you how the quality center works. And all these tools will be installed on your computer participants for your practice when you enroll in our QA course. So I go to the start and then I select the QC Explorer here. So do you see this kind of window opens for the quality center and I click on the go button. So every tester in the team can log in into this quality center server using the unique user ID and password that would be given to them. And that is how it will have the authentication. So if you create any document, it will be created under your username. If you make any changes, that also will get recorded under your username. So I click here on the login button. So you can see here participants. This is how the Mercury Quality Center opens. So we have the different modules here. You can create the list of requirements that we want to test. You can create the test cases here. I will show you one example of the test case that we have already created during our classes. So we were testing on this currency converter example here. So if I click on this currency converter design steps, do you see here? This is how the Test cases can be created in the quality center or the ALM tool. So we enter the invalid amount, valid amount, blank, and then we check the expected result. So basically we create this kind of documentation. And then when we do the testing participants, the results will get recorded over here. For example, we have the store locator test set. So we do the testing and then do you see, we update the status over here and then Whenever we identify the defects, so we are reporting the defects here on this quality center tool. Means you need not go to the developer 
with your defects you just have to create a defect here report it over here and the developers will look at this quality center tool on the regular basis check the defects fix them up and update the status after which you can again carry out your retesting activities so do you see participants this is a test management tool now instead of using the excel sheet and all you can create all your test case documents the requirement traceability matrix all the test documents can be created here in this quality center itself instead of using the excel sheet and also it is very easier for the test lead and project managers to generate the different kind of reports and then view what is the status of your testing process so this is called as a test management tool it is used to manage all the testing activities so this was the test management tool now participants the next tool that we have is the performance testing tool that is the load runner again there are different types of performance testing tools available hp load runner is there sql profiler is there which comes along with your sql database management system all right so there are different performance testing tools that are used so participants if you remember in yesterday's class we had defined the meaning of testing see testing is not just to identify the defects we should also make sure that we meet the requirements of the client and performance or in other words the speed of the software is another requirement that is to be met and then we need to test it so what exactly is performance participants performance means it is a speed of the software or you can say the efficiency of the software now what are the different factors which can affect the performance of the software the number of users who will be using the software the data that can be loaded into the database if there is huge amount of data your software can work slower and then the availability of the resources for example we have the server how many servers are required to get the desired speed how we use the software for example you can consider the google.com it is under use 24 bar 7 by huge number of users it never goes down okay it is never going down it is never getting slow or inactive it is giving continuous performance 24 bar 7 now participants if i want to test with the different number of users so you know right in the real time there will be huge number of users for example let's say we have ebay.com here so there are millions of customers who will be visiting this ebay.com and then they will be making the purchases correct so when too many users start using the software what happens there is a possibility that the speed can reduce and then finally it can crash so here we have to test with the different number of users as specified by the client let's say our client has specified that they want a software which can be accessed or which can support 10000 users or the customers at the same time so as a qa you need to check during the performance testing whether the software is able to support all the 10000 users now participants there is a problem here is it possible for you to invite all the 10000 users to your it company to do the performance testing is it practically possible it's not okay you cannot invite 10000 users to your it company in order to do the performance testing for you then tell me how will you do the performance testing how can you test the speed of the software with so many number of users in case you don't do this kind of testing and you release it to the client suddenly 10000 users start using the software it will break down correct so how do you test so in order to test this kind of scenarios we need the testing tool and we call it as a performance testing tool so this is a purpose why the performance testing tools should be used in the project why the performance testing tools have to be used in the project and also we have to test the different kind of scenarios now all the 10000 users will not start using the software at the same time slowly the number of users will increase then it will decrease again it might increase and go to the peak again it can decrease to some extent again decrease again increase 
so you can see this kind of different usage patterns over here all right so you can see the different usage patterns over here for the different kind of software so you have to test this kind of scenarios and it is not possible that you can control 10000 real users at the same time in order to test the different kind of scenarios so we need the performance testing tool here and do you see this is called as a peak load peak load means participants when maximum number of users are using the software for example here maximum is 10000 users so when all the 10000 users are using the software at the same time we call it as a peak load so this kind of scenario has to be tested so in order to test this kind of scenarios we need the tool and we call it as a performance testing tool so this tool also is included in our in our qa course and we'll be learning the hp load runner so participants do you see after you install this hp load runner you can see that there are three different components that will get installed on your system one is a virtual user generator in which we will be recording the scripts that are going to run automatically and then we have the controller component over here which will help you to test the different kind of scenarios that I mentioned like you want to test with the peak load and then um, you want to test the scenarios for example um, let's say the number of users go on increasing initially for 5 minutes and then they are at peak load for another 10 minutes and then the number of users go on decreasing for another 15 minutes right so do you see participants this kind of scenarios can be tested using the software and they can be designed using this controller and then there is a third component over here which is analyzer which will automatically generate the result and it will show you what is the status of your performance testing the main parameter that we consider here the metric that we consider here is called as a The main uh, metric that we consider here it is called as a um, the response time all right so we have the response time response time is how much time the system takes in order to respond to the request of the user so all this response time everything will get displayed automatically here automatically the results are generated which you can analyze so do you see here participants this is how the generator looks like so you want to create a script here recent script it is and then if you want to create a new one you can click on the create button and then you can automatically record the steps so this is a hp load runner tool that we have more details about this will be discussed during our qa course in fact we will install this tool on your computer and then we will help you to understand it practically so what is the next tool participants after the performance testing the database testing tool now let's see what exactly is this database testing first of all so participants whenever you're signing up for a gmail account okay let's say you're signing up for a gmail account then there is a database over here of the gmail wherein all your details will get entered for example the username that you entered the password that you entered and all the details that you entered will get stored here in the database now whenever you try to sign in for the next time the user id and password that are stored here will be compared and then you will be allowed to sign in so it has to authenticate right when you enter the valid user id and password you click on the sign in button it will verify the details that you entered only if your username and password matches it will display the account details to you otherwise it will not display so how does it verify your username and password are stored here in the database which will be checked another example participants let's say you're transferring the funds from one account to the another account over here so all these transactions that are related to the bank banking will be getting stored here in the database of the bank all the customer information so the different customers their names their details what are the transactions 
So when you transfer the funds, there will be debit in one account and then there will be credit in the balance of the other account. So now who is going to check whether these changes are going to happen or not? So you need to check right whether the information is getting stored properly in the database or not, whether the changes are getting affected to the database or not. So as a QA, you're supposed to do this kind of testing and we call it as a database testing. We call it as a database testing. So as a QA, you should be able to view and validate the data in the database. So how do you view? In order to view participants, view the data in the database, you need a language to interact with the database and then you need the tools to write the language or the script. So here the language that we use is called as a SQL, the structured query language. And then there are different kind of tools that are available. Microsoft Management Studio, Database Management Studio, the Microsoft Database Management Studio. Then we have the SQL Plus and then there is a Toad tool. See all of them basically they behave in the same manner. The same SQL language is used for all the different kind of tools that I have mentioned over here. Any of them could be used in your real time project. The tools will really make difference if it is the database administration and development, but we don't get into that as a QA. As a QA, you just have to view the database and then validate the data in the database. You need not create the database. You need not create the tables in the database. No, you need not get into all those details. So as a QA, you just have to write some queries, some SQL queries and then you have to validate the data in the database, all right? So I can show you here if you want how it looks like. So do you see here, there's a toad sample database. If you double click on this one participants, the toad database opens, the tool opens wherein you can type the queries. So this comes with a sample database for your practice, which will be installed on your computer for your practice. So do you see, this is how it looks like. So you double click on the stored sample database and then it will get connected to the database and display the different tables and columns. So in the database, the information will be stored in the format of the tables wherein we have the columns and rows. And here you can type the queries and then click on the run button in order to view the results which you are supposed to validate. So do you see participants? These are a couple of database, uh, these are a couple of different kind of tools that could be used for your testing purposes. Now apart from this as I mentioned, we have the other tools like SOAP UI tool, Informatica tool, all this will be discussed in our regular QA classes. So as of now, I just introduced you to some of to some of the tools which could be used for the testing. I just wanted to bring one thing over here that for the different purposes in the testing process, we are going to use the different kind of tools. Alright, there will be different tools for the different purposes over here. So participants, this is what we had to discuss in today's class. So today's class was the practical exercises using the different kinds of tools. Now let me quickly check if there are any questions on your chat box. So let me copy the questions here from your chat box on my screen. So these are some of the questions that I see on the chat box. Um, regarding the syllabus, I think I already answered this question. Mohsin, you can find it on our website. It is www.h2kinfosys.com. And Selenium, it is a separate course, um, Najish, and you can add it into your QA course if you want. You can add it into the package. This tool is mostly used by the companies. So again, it's my, it depends on the company and then the type of project we decide the tool. I think HP, what is the meaning of HP? I already discussed. It is Hewlett Packard. 
how you connect the flight page with the QTP. So now, just the moment you write system util dot run, the application will open, and then you perform any kind of activity on the system. All the steps will get recorded. So you need not connect it. The moment you open it, any activity that you perform automatically, it will get recorded. Can we write the scripts to test other than QTP? Um, I don't get what you're trying to ask. Are you asking that you know even for the other testing tools we need the scripts? Yes, you have to write the scripts if you want to do the automation testing using the tools. Difference between QTP and Selenium? Selenium actually is an open source. QTP is a licensed version, and then it is existing still uh, till many from many years. And then the programming language or the scripting languages that are used, they are different. QTP has a very simple scripting language like Visual Basic. Selenium uses the Java, so we have lot of differences between them. What are the challenges of the automation? See, the main challenge Rashmi is to identify the objects. Sometimes the developers, web developers, they don't follow the standards of the software development, and then it is difficult for the tools to identify the objects that they have created. So that is a main challenge that we face when we do the automation testing. QTP the whole site will be tested. Not the whole site, Kessel. Whatever steps we are performing, those steps will get tested. UFT means as my it is unified functional testing. If you miss Ruby something, please let me know. QA and QC roles are same or different. See, basically, if you are talking about the QA, it is a quality assurance analyst. QC, it is the same thing. Okay, same thing, Deepak. Quality assurance and all in the organization. Yes, it's going to be the same thing. So, participants, these were the questions on my chat box. So now, participants, in case you want to enroll, you can enroll with us for this QA course. So we are from H2K Infosys participants, and we are E-verified business based in Atlanta. We provide the software training and then the job placement assistance. So basically, we are into the IT trainings and then placements. And these are the different services that we provide from H2K Infosys. We provide the IT trainings for the corporates and individuals and MS students. We also do the software development and then provide the placement services. We have the various courses that are provided here, like manual testing, automation testing. Do you see automation testing using HP QTP, the load runner, BA project management, developer courses? So there are a lot of IT courses that we provide. So participants, more details about all this you can find it on our website www.h2kinfosys.com. And then, if you want more details, you can also call us on this number seven seven zero triple seven one two six nine. So, in case any participants are not enrolled, and if you wish to enroll with us, participants, you can check the details either on our website or you can call us on this number for more details. So, participants, this was Priya here from H2K Infosys to provide you the project-based session, and then this was a second-day session that is the testing tools. Um, yes, we also have the on-site training classes that would be conducted. For more details, please contact H2K Infosys. Shagupta, please contact H2K Infosys. Um, Ruby, the more details you can find it on our videos. We are even available on the YouTube, or you can contact H2K Infosys. They will help you regarding this. Najish, during your QA course, each and every tool will be practiced in detail. Um, the video, yes, you can uh, contact H2K Infosys regarding that. So, participants, for more details, you have to contact H2K Infosys. Please call us on this number seven seven zero triple seven one two six nine. So, thanks everyone. It was nice interacting with all of you, and we will meet again in the tomorrow session.